So in the last episode, we beat both Madrid teams and then went and lost to Levante. Who knows what is going to happen today? Hello then and welcome back to Saving Espanol. This is episode number three of five. And in today's episode, we're going to play a live com game at home to Alaves to start things off. Then we're going to fast forward all the way through to the January deadline day. And we're going to see if there are any deals that need to be done, any business that needs to be done to get us ready for the second half of this season. Should be fun. Let's get into it. So, so far this season, so good, really. We've sit 13th in the league. We've played 12 games. We've won four, drawn three, lost five. A fairly average start to the season. There was a time, though, during the last episode where I thought we might win the league after a fantastic start to the year. We were unbeaten in our first eight games, I think we are unbeaten in. We then came crashing down with a few losses in the league in a row, actually. Just one win in four games in the league. And, yeah, we were brought down a peg or two with that. But, overall, we're pretty happy. We're 10 points off the target of equaling what Espanyol managed to do over a whole campaign after just 12 games if we can get a win here against Alaves we are even closer to that target by the end of this episode I'm hoping that actually we are we've already done better than Espanyol did in real life this year that's the aim and I feel like it's a very achievable aim we just need four wins basically and we're going to play quite a few games so as I mentioned, we are going to play Alaves at home to start with. They sit 18th in the league, so we should definitely be the favourites for it. I've had a few selection conundrums, a few things to ponder in terms of who we are going to pick for today's team. This is ultimately what I've plumped for. It is continuing with the 4-4-2 system. We pushed it up to positive these days, especially in a game against someone like Alaves. I'm hoping, praying, fingers crossed, fingers crossed that this might be the first live con victory in any of these series where we're saving teams. It's uh, It's been a long time coming. It's not even happened yet. I'm talking myself into something that hasn't happened. But let's hope that today is the day. We're playing against a team that is down in 18th. Surely, surely we can do this. We are going to go with Olaf Thabal. Remember, I didn't know who which keeper to go with last time. We're going to change it up today. We went Diego Lopez. I actually think he was quite good in that game. But we're going to go with Olaf Thabal in goal today. At the back, it's going to be Corchia, Mere, Bernardo and Vila at left back. Uh, Didach Vila has to start because there is a slight injury to our left back. Uh, Pedrosa, who is, yeah, he's injured down there. Like he's back in four days. He probably could play, but we're not going to risk him. Vila's not a bad option at left back actually. He's going to start there. On the right hand side is going to be Melendo, our most creative force. He's got himself something like 11 assists so far this season. Very good going from him. In the middle is going to be Dada and Gomez. I like this little combination in the middle of there. Gomez has not played much this season but I'm trying to phase him in even more so and uh, I'm hoping for big things from him. And then Vargas on the left hand side. We don't have a lot of options on the left. He, he's going to start despite only having 86% condition. I hope it doesn't affect him. I hope he can still do a job and then up front we're going to go with Wule and Ferreira our two top goal scorers up top Ferreira being the star of the show so far he's been excellent he scored 12 goals he's going to play this complete forward role and that is today's team there it is we've uh picked I think the player that's not played any games yet this year as our captain uh, Vila at left back yes he's now the captain interestingly they're going to go with this very defensive looking 5-4-1 two defensive midfielders and then a flat back five wow Alaves I feel like we could probably go a little bit more attacking now that I've seen that we'll start with a 4-4-2 but if it looks like it is just attack versus defense we might push these wingers up Melendo and Vargas and get them further forward perhaps that's something we need to look into because that is very defensive from Alaves and we are underway then. Let's keep an eye on this and see see if they are that defensive because that is one of the most defensive formations I've seen in a very long time from the AI. I almost respect it. We started slowly then. It's two shots for us in the first 10 minutes. Zero for them as you might expect with a with a system like this. No highlights yet. All right, so we've had six shots, three on target, and we are still yet to get a highlight. Surely that has got to change soon. It's been all us, though, which is promising. I'm going to tell them to get creative. Let's see if we can split open this defensive unit by telling them to get creative. Of course, they're on the attack. Of course they are. The first highlight goes to Alaves. We're quite lucky, in fact, that they've not scored from that. In their pink kit, they've headed it over. Finally, here we come, and we've scored. Our first attack, our first highlight. It's not our first attack. Our first highlight, Sergi Dada. Dada, Dada has headed it in at the back post. It's a cross from Matthias Vargas, our left midfielder. It's a pretty simple header at the back post for Dada. We lead 1-0. Finally, the breakthrough has been made. 
it's been made actually as Alaves came into the game slightly more than they have been. We've got a free kick here for 2-0. It's Vargas. He's hit the post. Mere's there. Mere just runs it towards the byline and, and it's been cleared. Half time we lead. Is this the game? Is this the game where we break our live com duck? Can we get a win in a live com, please? 20 minutes into the second half and nothing really has happened. They were fired up by some feedback. I told my lads to get creative. Not much has happened. We've now got 15 minutes to go. I'm going to make a change simply because nothing is happening and I feel like it might be something that we should be doing. I'm going to bring on Mark Rocker for Moy Gomez. I think that's all I'm going to do. Maybe um, let's do Ferreira off. Let's get to Tomas on. Ferreira's not done a lot today. He's been great in the past, but today he's been quiet. So let's switch it up up top. 10 minutes to go. Not much is happening still. Five minutes to go. I'd be quite happy just to see this one out. I know it's a little bit of a boring game, but if, if it ends up in a win, that is fine by me. We're having this issue, by the way. Vargas, we don't really have another option on this left-hand side. I mean, Moy Gomez might be the only guy who can play that. I'm going to put Wu Lei there just for a little bit. In January, in this transfer window that we're going to go to today, left midfielder, is that something we look for? Potentially. We'll keep an eye out for it, definitely. Full-time whistle. We've done it. We are live com winners. We've beaten Alaves, who are third bottom. We have moved into the top half of the table, everybody. We are ninth in the league. 18 points now. We are just seven points off that real life total that Espanyol achieved. Get in. Look at that. It was a bit of a non-affair. That was probably one, one of the most boring games I've ever had to sit through. And I'm sorry to subject you to it, to be honest, uh, viewers. That was That is my bad. I'm, I can only apologize. I will refund you the cost of your tickets um, if you've bought tickets for today. But a 1-0 win nonetheless. Let's go and make drama happen in the window instead. That's what we can bank on. We are going to go and do one of these fast forwards now. I've done the click early there. Don't ignore that little mini click. We are going to zoom forward to deadline day, which is is at the end of January, you know when it is. We'll be after this Real Betis game. We're going to go and play these games now. I will be back in a flash. Three, two, one. And we're back. It's January the 31st. It's deadline day. And have a look at that league table. Look at that. Drink it in. We are at seventh position. We are doing brilliantly. We've played 22 games now. We've won nine. That's four more than Espanyol won in the whole of the 2019-20 season in real life. We've got 32 points. That's seven more points than they got in the whole of the 2019-20 season in real life. We have only played 22 games. It's going a lot better than I probably would have predicted before the start of the season. And there's lots of reasons for optimism. I'm going to race through the results now, all the way from this Alaves game up to the most recent game, which was against Betis, because I want to give enough time in this video to go through deadline day and see if there's any business that can be done. I'm not sure that there is going to be any business to be done, but we're at least going to try and have a little look. We're going to dip our feet into the water and just see what's about. Dip our whole feet isn't the same dip your toes in the water. So since that Alaves game, we have beaten Valladolid with a really strong 4-0 win. Ferreira, Darda, Caleri, De Tomas with the goals there. We then beat Cluj in the Europa League. Ferreira scoring two goals in that one. He is having a really good season so far. Definitely our best performer of the season so far. And it's come a little bit from left field. I wasn't even expecting him to be a starter, but he's been our best striker, probably our best player overall. De Thomas also scoring in that game. We've got strikers that are scoring, or at least they were at this stage. We then lost to Valencia 1-0, didn't play great. We then lost 4-1 to Leganes. Leganes, for some reason, have got our number. We really struggle against them, and we're actually terrible against them all the time as was actually proven in the most recent cup game where we lost to them and went out of the Spanish Cup in the third round. We lost to Leganes again in that one. Weird. We went on a little bad run there, then two draws and then a draw, two losses, sorry, and then a draw against Villarreal. Uh, Mark Rocker scoring forever, scoring in that one. We then beat PSV in Group A. This is what qualified us top of Group A in the Europa League. Having a good European season, actually, and that will continue. We've drawn Krasnodar in the next game in, uh, in the first knockout round in that competition. We then lost to Vigo. South of Vigo beating us 3-0 away from home. This was a poor result. We didn't play great in that, but we bounced back. Got a nice morale boosting 8-0 win in the Spanish Cup first round. Just look at the goal scorers there. I'm not going to read through them because there is a lot of them. An 8-0 win. And that confidence actually took us all the way through to this Mallorca game here where we won three games and drew just one. The, the draw, by the way, we managed to get a 92nd minute equaliser. We'll take it. Raul de Thomas with the equaliser. We then beat Real Irún in the cup. We beat Levante in the league and we beat Mallorca comfortably in the league as well. Spreading the goals around a little bit there too. Then after that, Leganes loss in the cup. We've Our most recent game being this win against Ruby's Real Betis and Boya Iglesias's Real Betis. We beat them 6-2. Raul de Tomas scored four goals in this. 
one of them was a penalty, and then he, well, he scored in the 32nd minute, then the 42nd minute, the 43rd minute, and the 49th minute. Really quick fire four goals there before half time, and that meant that we were going to win this game. A 6 2 win. Excellent stuff. We are flying at the moment, actually flying, and this is where we're going to take it into deadline day and see if there is any business that can be done. So it is now deadline day. We are going to, of course, take part in the shenanigans of deadline day. I keep calling them shenanigans. I don't really know why. So let's go and have a little look at the market, see what there is about. Particularly, I'm looking for a left midfielder really here, although we have 2.37 million and no wage budget to work with really on this. Do you reckon I can? There's not a lot of money to play with. Is there? Do you know what? Let's ask the board, see if they're feeling generous. Will they give us any money? What would you like to discuss today? Right, Chen, could we have... I don't want the club to go backwards. Could we have a little bit of money, please? I worry about the club's reputation, Cheng. We disagree. Right, that's been denied. We're not going to get any more money in this window. Right, we're not going to get any more money out of the owner. We're going to have to be a little bit thrifty in our workings, in our dealings in this window then. Let's have a look at left midfielders that would be willing to join on loan. These are loan listed. There's not a lot there, is there? Let's have a look a bit further forward. Not many players coming up there. There's not much available here. There's no one really that is jumping out as anybody we can get in on loan. And I just don't think we're really going to be able to afford anybody in terms of with this transfer budget. Phil Foden? They want 30k a week for Phil Foden. It's actually not that bad. We could offer 30k a week. We could get Phil Foden here. He can play out wide on the left, but he can also be that attacking midfielder in the middle. Let's put an offer in. Let's see if Phil Foden would be willing to come to Espanyol for the second half of the season. I think that's basically it. He's not even loan listed. He just is interested. Well, there's a doubtful interest in him coming on loan over to Espanyol. I think that's enough for me to at least put a bid in. Secondly, I am going to see what it would take to get Mariano to come here from Real Madrid. They'd like 85,000. That's We're not going to be able to afford 85,000. Would you take 30,000? No. Okay, that's not going to happen. In terms of cheap transfer options, I'm just having a look here. We've got Berguia Alaves is a left midfielder. I'm not really interested, though. Thomas Munier is kind of jumping out. I think his contract is going to run out, but he's available for 700k as the asking price. I think that's worth a bid. We'd have to adjust the budgets for him, but I'm not sure what his wages would be. Probably quite a lot, but I feel like that's a player that would bring a bit of quality to the team. He would probably play as a right back, but I'm, I think it's worth a bid at the very least. So I'm gonna we're gonna explore that as an opportunity. I keep coming back to Bergui, who is a left midfielder, Alaves. I don't think he's great, but we could get him for free, basically. We could just pay his wages for a loan deal and then say that we, if he plays 10 games, we'll sign him for 3.2 million at the end of the season. I'm going to put it in there. I don't know if we're going to do this, but at the very least, we are going to get ourselves a scout report and have a look at him today. So the options that we are going to explore are Bergui, that left midfielder from Alaves, Thomas Mounier, and also Phil Foden. I feel like Foden, if we could bring him in, would actually be a, be a bit of a coup. Also Mounier, I'd be happy with either of those. Bergui, potentially as a last resort. Let's see what happens for the rest of this deadline day. Phil Foden, the offer's been accepted. Mounier, they've accepted that too. He wants about £40,000 per week. That's a lot of money. I'm going to tell him he's going to be a starter, hoping that we can actually offer a little bit more. Um, big wage rise, do that. There we go. We can offer the money, you know. Well, we can offer this, apparently. So let's do it. He wants 59k. Well, we're not going to be able to offer him that, but we are going to be able to give him 50k here, apparently. Big one of those usually helps. Right, he's not interested. We're not going to get Mounier, which is a shame because actually... I think we could have done a deal there. I'm going to try again. He might say no because he's now unhappy with the club, but we're at least going to try it again. We're going to now offer a contract to Bergui. This is for the future fee if we end up playing 10 games for us. Of course, if he's rubbish, we just won't play him in those 10 games. But let's offer him a contract, which is going to be about 11k there. I think that's doable. At least there is options here. Foden, if he wants to come in, can come in. It's been accepted. Yeah, there you go. Mounier's now not interested in joining us, which is a bit of a shame, but there you go. Um, I suppose we could declare interest, see if he changes his mind, get a scout report. We'll go to the end of the window to see if we can get him. I don't think it's going to happen, but there we go. Okay, so Phil Foden is willing to come in on loan. We're going to pay him £30,000 a week. We're going to have Phil Foden for the rest of this, this season. I think that's a pretty good deal, actually. I'm happy to have him in. He's, oh, I mean, the scouts and the coaches like him quite a lot. Four stars for us. Could end up being a bit of a starter. Let's make sure he gets registered and uh, we'll get him in. Phil Foden is now registered. Brilliant stuff. Bergui, 
is also going to come in as that left midfield cover then. So we've kind of done what we wanted to do. We've brought in a bit of quality with Phil Foden joining for the rest of the season. We've got ourselves a bit of a backup on the left-hand side, which is Bergwi. That's the only real position that we've been struggling for actual numbers. So I'm happy to bring him. We have to think about how we're going to register him now, but we've brought in another player there and I'm happy with it. All right, so that is our transfer deadline day done then for January. We're into February. We're ready for the rest of this season now. I'm happy with our business. We've brought in Phil Foden, which adds a little bit of quality. We've brought in Bergui, who's going to be a left-hand side. Bit of a backup, add us a little bit more in terms of depth for the squads. I think it leaves us in a good place for the rest of this season. I'm happy. What do you guys think? Get in the comments below. How do you rate that as a, first of all, the results that we've managed to have recently, but also in terms of our transfer dealings. Was it okay? Could we have done more? Are you impressed with what we've managed to do? Let me know in the comments below. And before you go, before we end today's video, please do subscribe to the channel. If you've not already subscribed, click that subscribe button. Also, give this video a like and uh, leave me those comments, as I said before. And most importantly, have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.